It's Friday morning. That can only mean one thing. Hanging out with Justin from Elevation Homes. Um, hmm. Uh, I guess my question this week is, aren't these wildfires wonderful all over the country? You know, good morning, David. It's, uh, I was just going to say, it's, it's, you know, probably four times as dark in my studio room here as that we, we, we normally are. I tried to move into the kitchen, but you kicked me out of there because you said the echo was too bad. <laughs> But uh, it, it's so if I look like I'm kind of haloed right now, it's because Dave put me in the dungeon. Um, uh, you, you can only handle one Justin at a time. <laughs> when I'm hearing four of them in my head, it gets a little creepy. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the the wildfire thing is, is is something else right now. We've uh, you know it, this time of year we're primarily booked on outdoor stuff, so we're doing we are finishing up the interior of an addition. Uh, which is really cool, by the way. So if you if you follow me on Instagram uh, at uh, Elevation Home Design, Elevation underscore Home Design, um, when we do the tour on this one, it, it is is a really cool renovation. It uh, it's you know you guys would be in, impressed with it. I, even I'm impressed with it. But uh, anyways, so we're doing. We actually did the whole house interior, and then we we were commissioned to do the in, almost the entire yard worth of landscape. Uh, small yard, but. So we're doing that right now, and the uh, honestly the, the the dust from the the saw cutting and the concrete and all the rest of that is 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 not even the issue. It's the it's the air quality, right? So I mean, yeah. you, you know, normally you're you, we're we're back there cutting interlock and and cutting up concrete stuff like that, and we're wearing masks because because of that. So we're actually you know it's complete opposite. It's like the, the regular air is the issue right now. And, you know, a couple of us, I, I do have asthma myself and a couple of my employees have it. And we're like, damn, it's 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 a bit rough right now. Um, the reason I wanted to talk about it, too, is just that poor air quality. But I don't think we understand. And you and I have never really touched on fire damage to a home or smoke damage. But just knowing that is that thick in the air, when you go into a place that's had smoke damage, how the Heck, do you ever get that out? Well, yeah, it is. It, it's a different challenge, and, and, and I, I've said before, I'd rather clean up. I'd rather clean up smoke than water. However, um, it is. Uh, it's it's a less mucky task because <clears throat> it's um, it's dry, uh, but uh, but yeah, it's it, it's getting. It's. I mean, you all know that the the smell of smoke. It doesn't matter what it is. Campfire smoke, you know, cigarette smoke, all these things. I mean. It, it embeds, and, and the thing is, because it produces heat, it actually opens up the, the porous surfaces in the room, and then, ah. and they and they love it. So, it, you know, drywall surfaces, wood surfaces, um, you know, even even some hard surfaces that you would think that would be penetrate, uh, like glass. It, I mean, cigarette smoke loves glass, and so does certain types of fire smoke, especially chemically. So any kind of chemical smoke, like if it, if you had burning plastic, like a burning window frame, for instance, a poly window frame, um, yeah, even a little bit of that, it uh, it'll adhere to glass and it actually etches it, and it's the window. So if you had a burnt a burnt window and it affected three other nearby windows, I mean, you those windows were junk too, even though they're perfectly fine. So it it really is a, a bit of a pain in that regard, and and if it's you know, most of, we don't do a whole lot of restoration in our company, but we do do a lot of, like, we get a lot of, of you said you did. with cigarette smoke, right? And, and because, you know, we're buying things that are from the 40s and 50s where it didn't matter, right? And it was, uh. it, it, everything, everything was an indoor smoke fest and, you know, it, it, some of them are really bad. Um, and it's, uh, it's some work. I mean, it's some work in, in, in priming sealing um trying to get this stuff and in some cases it, we, we can't paint it away like we literally have to change out the drywall go back to the studs you, yeah you literally have to strip it back don't you yeah it's it's probably like i mean it's kind of similar to mold that way a little bit isn't it you really got to clear it out it is, like, it, it, i don't know how it is it, it doesn't grow like mold obviously once it's done it's no no right but um but yeah it 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 adheres just like it. It's just like removing it. I mean, you know, you, you scrape it, you scrape it, you scrape it. It doesn't seem to go ever go away. So, I mean, there are there there's there's chemical paints and there's chemical sealers that that we use to um, if it's not to a certain severity, we we can seal it back and paint over it and it becomes a brand new surface again. But um, you know, in in most case, in most cases, if it was even a little localized fire, like you know, a little water heater fire or something like that that happened in a basement. 
um, a lot of the time, yeah, it's it's pretty much the only option is is to replace because of the of how much compromise it does to materials. Is it the same way then? Obviously, you got the smoke with the fire, but and I'm sure you've seen some crazy fire stuff that's happened oh, to homes. Yeah. Um, and take just a second talk about that because I I know that you said to me off air we were talking. You said like cigarettes is a big thing that starts a lot of house fires, and I'm, I'm sure there's kitchen scenarios that probably lead to quite a bit too. Uh, can you talk a little bit to that and why it's so, yeah. you know, obviously you want to have your smoke alarms and everything else, but once a fire starts, forget it in a house, I would think. Right. And and that's, yeah. And that's where, that's where the, the fire and water thing swings the other way, because I mean, you could have a flood and still have a pretty good potential to save the house or save the room or save the basement. Um, but, you know, if you have a fire, you know, if, if you're really quick, you're, you can get it. Right. I mean, but right. I mean, generally people run and, and then, you know, yeah. not, not everybody is, you know, you know, uh, recover firefighter. So, uh, I mean, I've had a few scenarios where, you know, we have extinguishers around the house and we've, we've put out and caught what would have been a, co a complete house collapse. Right. But, um, but yeah, I mean, this is where, you know, uh, building code and things like that in the past 10 years has really become, a hot spot with this stuff because you know we're trying to we're trying to not not lose our houses here right so um a little while ago uh both the esa which is the electrical safety association authority i'm sorry and um and the ontario building code and the national building code i mean they they went heavy on the on the smoke thing um so so now if you'll notice uh if anybody's ever been in a, in a new house um a new build like past like four or five years you'll see a, like a, an absorbent amount of smoke detectors um, like, and they're everywhere. It's like Christmas lights. So, and, and, it, and it's not only, not only are they smoke, but now we're required, especially in Ontario to do uh, what's called smoke strobe CO, which is, you know, so we, it has to be a smoke combination, smoke detector, CO detector and a strobe light. And they have to talk to you. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, the, in some regions, uh, they actually require the voice and then the smoke detector will, will basically, you know, in a very loud voice, a, a lady will come on and say, Hey, you got to get that out of here. So, um, but, and then the, the strobe light obviously is a, you know, and, and this is for, uh, you know, we talked about this before, like accessibility, uh, folk and, and people that are deaf, people that are blind, it has to accommodate everybody. Yeah. You know, because, you know, a deaf person, you can ring that bell all day long. doesn't matter. Yeah. But if there's a strobe light going on, uh, you know, and it's a it's quite a light show when these things go off, uh, you huh. know, you're probably going to see it. Um, I mean, That's pretty cool. It's like having a cop car in your bedroom, you know. Um, there's so many places to go with that, and I'll leave that yeah. alone. Anyway, um, yeah. <laughs> but... but I didn't know about that. I was going to, it's funny. I was going to ask you what the strobe was for, but yeah, it makes perfect sense. Like what, a, I mean, that's really cool. I like that. That's, that's going to save lives for sure. Yeah. And it's so that's, it, that's it, a, like, we don't have a choice anymore. Uh, that, right. You know, a lot of guys, a lot of guys actually get upset about it. Um, and believe me, I've had my days where I'm like, man, we need another smoke. Um, because they, yeah. the, it's in every room now in the hallways outside of rooms one or two in a kitchen. Like, I mean, on a, on a typical main floor, you would have seven to eight smoke detectors. Um, the, the problem with this is that, you know, not only are they, they're interconnected hardwired, so we have to do yeah. a substantial amount more wiring, is that, that, I mean, these things are like 250 bucks a piece. Yeah, so, yeah. So versus we, you know, we used to buy our, even our, our hardwired smokes were $20, $23, right? Yeah. But these bad boys are, uh, I mean, they're, they're uh, 250 bucks on average uh, for the nice ones. And, you know, in an average house, we're putting 14 to 15. So, I mean, you got, you got three or $4,000 budget now in any yeah, just on that. new house, strictly in smoke detectors. At what point, like when a house, when there is a fire in a house, at what point is it not savable? Like, is it, do the do you insurance companies look at it and go, okay, it's 70% burnt? No. Is it fifty percent? Do you got? Is that? Does that even exist? It, oh, it does. Yeah, and 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 usually when it when it comes to fire, it's the percentages are actually quite a, a lot lower because as soon as there's fire there and it's compromised structure, the, the insurance wants nothing to do with it because 
then the house becomes a lot more risk. Even if it's restructured, you know, the the connection points are not how the house was was designed typically. Um, right. You know, and you're kind of you're kind of bob jobbing it together. I actually did a house in Brantford in the North End. I don't know. I guess it's two years ago now. And so he had a, a shed up against the back of the house, two story house, um, and you know all his lawnmowers, gas, all that kind of stuff was in there. Well, one of his gas cans uh, did a self ignition and and blew up, and it, and it you know it rose up the and and the house was brick, right? So it rose up the edge of the house, and it actually started it burned through it, you know, and this is during the night. And it actually got within, you know, 10 minutes, it got to the soffit and it burned through the aluminum soffit. And that it was, it was trying to, it was heading towards sort of the vacuum of the, of the attic. So it, it burned. So it got into the attic and then it caught the insulation and it burned like kind of a big fireball out of the roof section. Maybe I, I, I'd say it's probably 10 by 12 and then a little bit of the ceiling underneath. So it compromised, you know, the better part of about 15 trusses. So that one we were allowed to repair, but I remember the guys telling me, the homeowner saying that it was only because it was under 15% or something like that. And really, yeah, I'm sure every number on every house is slightly different, but I mean, yeah, he's like, he's like, oh yeah, if it was any more than this, basically any the more, more than 20% of the square footage of the house, they would have rid off the whole house. So, so, I mean, so we did repair it and, and you know, it, it was obviously we had to hand cut it. We weren't able to put new trusses heat back into this existing roof, but, um, but yeah, they allowed us to repair it and it was, it was all good because there was still lots of, uh, lots of good wood, like original wood that was still there. We were going to tie into, but yeah, in most cases, like that's, that, that's few and far between. I mean, if the fire goes, people run and that's it. I got one last question for you. And this is uh, a friend of mine. Um, this is concerns your industry and I, I kind of want to get your take on it. So this gentleman got a quote to have something built and, um, he said, yeah, let's do it. He had budgeted extra money just in case. Cause you know, the way, way things goes, yeah. but it ended up being like $70,000 over budget. And he oh. didn't do, according to what he told me, he didn't do anything different right. than the price. Yeah. And I said, well, can't you like, is there any, like, I, Shouldn't that contractor have been telling him that as it went along? Like, I'm just, and I'm not, I don't know the scenario. Right. I'm just asking what your opinion would be, because I think I know you and I know you've said to people, look, this is, you know, this is not going to, we can't do it for this price. Like, you don't, you know, bull, yeah. you just kind of yeah. tell them the way it yeah. is. So is that, is, you know, in your industry, is that a commonplace thing uh, or it, do people just not understand? It's a commonplace for, um, you know, if they're fairly new in the industry, I mean, so 10 to 15% is over is acceptable in the industry. Um, given, okay. Given that, uh, you know, it's relatively on scope and you know, you, that's not adding, that's just strictly like things have happened in the walls or whatever. You, know, you find a, you, you think a whole house is copper and you find one copper wire and the rest is not a tube or, or, or whatever. Right. So 10 yeah. to 50% over is, is pretty common, you know, given that the scope did not grow by that amount. Right. right. Um, but yeah, 70 grand, I mean, yeah, that would, it would have had to have been a, uh, 70 grand over would have had to have been a substantial amount to start with to be 10% over. Right. Right. Um, but yeah, se 70 grand over, I mean, yeah, I mean, you would have had, that would have had to have been a half a million project, half a million dollar project to begin with. Right. No, it was two hundred thousand. Yeah, it was. It was a clean. It was a clean build. Like it was the building, half the building was knocked out. Right, and it was just there was no plumbing. It was just basically building a room. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I think there's something yeah. wrong. Like I would be concerned. That sounds a bit odd because it's um and unfortunately, I mean, you know, I I met with three people this week um doing a, a builder inspection. In fact, uh, and one of them was a Terion claim. Um, and, and, you know, that, what's that mean? Oh, it's, so Terry on new home warranty. Uh, oh, okay. so I, you know, if <laughs> a lot of builders will offer this and they, in some cases they have to offer this. Um, if you build a brand new house and you sell it, um, from, you know, my corporation to a homeowner, 
um, it's most people have Terry on warranty. It's, it's like a, it's like a builder insurance type thing. Right. Okay. And it just, it just ensures that, that what you're giving them is, um, up to a certain standard. Right. Uh, so it, you know, in these people's cases, so a, a lot of the times, you know, if you're commissioned, if you're contracted to do a house, you don't need Terry on, uh, if you're, you know, building a house and selling it as a product, then you need Terry on. And then there's, you know, there's a, that's another whole conversation, but, um, but anyways, so it was, it was a, you know, when there's a Terry on claim, uh, over X amount of dollars, they got to have a third party in there to have a, to have a look, to be like, you know, there are these people just being like ridiculously picky or is yeah. it legit? So I went to go do what actually, uh, out in, um, you know, the other East there, sorry, the West side of Norfolk. And this brand new house is one year old. And when you pull up, it's, it's I mean, really, really nice looking place. But, uh, but, you know, their, their build bill was over substantially. Um, and, you know, they felt they got a really subpar house. And I must admit, I mean, I don't like to harp on other builders, but I mean, my God, like, <laughs> Like, the, yeah, like some of the stuff that was in this house was so far from standard. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. But um, so that my, my point of the conversation is that there there is still pirates out there, folks. And, and they're they're going to if if they can do the I, I increase invoices too. don't get me wrong. Right. But I increase right. them based on on valid points. And, and they and those points or pictures go in with my invoices to my customers that, you know, I, I, my program is pretty great. I can include pictures and be like, Hey, remember this? Like it was, you know, this was X amount of dollars and it attached price mm -hmm. to it. So, uh, but in a lot of cases, um, you know, some contractors will abuse it and use it for just a, a license to claim because the, the thing that about the about pirate contractors, and that's what I call them is that, you know, we have this, this threat, which is to protect us. And, so, but some guys use it to um, threaten people and it's, and it's the home lean. Right. So as a builder, you know, if 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 we don't disagree with something or you don't pay us, uh, we can lean the home. And and it's a right. we can put a construction lean on really easily. Uh, I mean, so and this goes both ways. So, I mean, for all you customers out there that, you know, <laughs> don't don't have the money or don't want to pay for whatever reason, uh, it, it better be legitimate because, I mean. Yeah. You can have a, a legal lien on your house and that can stop a lot of things from happening in the future. Uh, however, I've done one in my entire life and it was, it was a fellow that uh, in the 08 crisis didn't have, you know, didn't have the money to pay. And, and I, and I had to, and I actually lifted it after a year because the guy was in such a rough spot. I mean, so was I, uh, but you know, I felt bad for him and I actually lifted it and I let him go with it. But um, wow. anyway, but yeah, so I mean, so this guy, you know, a lot of times they, they, they will use that um, or it's, you know, or the homeowner is aware of it because it might say it in the contract or whatever. And then they, you know, they'll creep up that estimate and try to scare them into paying more. Right. right. If you're aware of it, it's like it's in the back of every customer's head. Like, oh, crap. Like, if I don't do this, he's just going to throw the lien and then we can't even get a credit card. Right. Right. And, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and I see that happen, and uh, I see that I, I see that happen, and I've seen it happen three times in Norfolk, and um, that's more times in any jurisdiction that I've seen in ten years. Hmm. And the reason wow. being that I think is that as great of a county as we are, um, you know, we are a trades county. Like, you know, we we farm, we trade. Like, there's builders, farmers, like. I mean, we, we build stuff over here. Um, the problem is everybody thinks they can do it. <laughs> That's a great way to finish the show. For God's sake. Yes. Thanks for doing this today. Justin from Elevation Homes. Take care. Have a great weekend and uh, keep it going, man. Stay busy.